there, Sandra here from Create in Spain. I'm hoping that you can actually see these gems because my camera doesn't really want to focus on them, <laughs> unfortunately. However, these are not gems that I've purchased. They are ones that I have made and they are, in some cases, really, really gorgeous. Unfortunately, I'll go out of focus when I go closer. Maybe I can zoom in when I edit. Um, you're just going to have to take my word for it, but they are really, really lovely and they're multicolored, and they're just really, really pretty. And I think you're gonna be surprised at how you can make them. Now, as it happens, my son left behind, when he visited at Christmas, he was doing some 3D printing stuff, and he left behind this bottle of resin, which I hasten to add, I suggested that he use to smooth out the 3D print, and it works like a dream. He was really pleased with that tip, but, trying to take this stuff on an airplane, no, nah, that's a no-go. So he left me the remnants of this bottle. This particular one is quite handy. It cures in about two or three minutes, I think it's supposed to be, and it has a fine applicator tip, should you need it, which you do for this. Now you've guessed what I've been doing. However, you probably haven't guessed all the different methods that you can use to make these. Now, in the first case, I thought to myself, well, if I've got some sequins, maybe this will be a way of making some domed decorations. And this does work really, really well, particularly if you have cupped sequins. I've not tried it with the flat ones. So let's get my... UV resin out and see what happens here. Um, this one's got a big hole in the middle, so obviously it's going to be clear in the middle. And I just put a drop of resin on there and it's kind of self leveling. So if you've got a cupped sequin, it does it really, really well. And very rapidly get my UV lamp over the top. This is a nail lamp. Now, if you don't have this special craft resin, you can do it with your nail gels if you have one that is not supposed to have a sticky, tacky layer on top. And some do and some don't. If it's a no wipe gel, then you can use it. Now, the other thing is, if you've been given any no wipe gels that you wouldn't wear on your nails in a month of Sundays and they're just going to waste, Use those to make little droplets and you can use those on your cards or your art, whatever it is that you're making. So this is one way of doing it, but I have found there are several other ways and some of them are quite surprising. On some of them, I actually applied a little bit of powdered eyeshadow, a uh, mica eyeshadow, and I just put it onto my silicone mat here. Silicone mat is very important because you don't want your gel to stick to anything. Just going to give that another minute. Applied it to the mat and then just dropped the liquid on top. And because it sets, it holds the mica in it and it worked really well. It gave a really nice, subtle, pearly sort of look. I'll pick one out of here when I've finished setting this one. And that works really well. Other things I've tried using are acrylic um, paints. These are pearlized paints. And if you happen to have any of the ones like I have, which are colour changing acrylics, oh, they're really good. Now, a tip on the colour acrylics is that you want to paint it onto your mat, but don't let it fully dry. Put your gel on it while it is still setting, then cure it and take them off as soon as they are cured, because otherwise you'll end up with the skin around it unless you've done your blob of gel the exact size there we go, of your paint blob, then you will have a skin around it. Now it's not insurmountable. I think, have I got one here? I think that was one of them, was it? Yeah, that was one of them. Um, what I had, when I had a little skin around the edge, you can either tear it off or you can just sort of tuck it under and it will sort of mold into the rest of it without a problem. So 
And these two have just been done and they are now ready to use. So this one's come out a beautiful orangey gold colour with a little bubble in it, which is quite fun. And then this one is the pink ring. And I think that looks actually really nice. I like the fact it's got a big hole in the middle and it's only got the colour around the end. I really think that's, um, that's quite interesting. And if you wanted to do eyes on an animal and you didn't have any eyes, that would be a way of doing it. Hmm, there we go. Yet yeah, another way of working out. So another one that I've done, this one here, I put a little bit of very highly sparkly, multi-faceted glitter on here and just put my drop on that. And of course it hangs on to the glitter because it's very sticky and it cures and then it grips it. And then you just pick it up and you have your little embellishment. I've got some here, for example, this one here, I just put a little metal star in it. And this is one that I did, oops, you can get something off it, something on there. Um, this is one that I did with some pearlized eyeshadow. It's very subtle, but it's still very, very pretty. You can also do little mica dots. If you've got any of this, mylar, that's the word, mylar. I couldn't think what it's called for a minute. If you've got any mylar sequins, those are really fun to do as well. This is just a tiny, tiny little piece of mylar, as you can see from the back. It's a hexagon. You might just about be able to see that. Now, if you're going to do the mylar, it does give a great effect, but mylar is very lightweight. So what you need to do is, instead of using a mat like this, take this up. Oops static. You need to put down a piece of double sided tape. This was a failed one. This was with um, a chalk and it, for some reason it makes the chalk disperse so that one doesn't work. But you need to put your mylar onto some double sided tape then put your drop on, set your drop and then just peel it off of the double sided tape and that works just fine. And it's a lot easier than trying to stop the mylar lifting up when you're putting something on the top of it. So there we have it. Now you might say, well, why don't you put these directly on your card? You know, why, why make them separate? Why do them before you put them on the card? Well, the choice is yours. You can do it directly on the card. It depends how confident you are that you're not going to put gel somewhere where you don't want it. If you make a mistake on one of these, no great shakes, do it again, no problem. If you've finished your card and you make a mistake and you've set it, eh, tough. And if you haven't set it, it's just gonna be a gooey mess. So it could ruin your card, but yeah, fun. So if there are any particular colors of gems that you would like that you haven't got, you can do it. Now, the other thing which I was really surprised and I almost forgot to mention is the fact you can do it with alcohol markers. And no, I haven't gone absolutely insane. Right, here is an alcohol marker. It's roughly the same color, I think, as my mat, so you may not be able to see it that well for the moment, but I will pick it up when it's done. And all I'm going to do is to do a bit of a scribble on there so I have the color there, okay? And then get my gel out. I'd forgotten completely about this particular one. And gel out, turn around, got my dot. Cure. So that is now pretty set. It possibly isn't completely and utterly set because I only gave it one minute and not two. But you can see it's got the colour and that's a perfectly brilliant, lovely droplet type gem. Because I can't actually get droplet gems where I am unless I buy them online and I'm not going to do that. So there we go. That's it for today. I hope you enjoyed that. If you liked it, please give me a thumbs up and subscribe if you haven't already. And please share a link to my videos. I could do with a few more subscribers. Take care now. Bye-bye.